Hi guys, today we are talking about the Singer heavy duty lineup of sewing machines and particularly why you shouldn't buy them, any of them. So listen, if you bought one, sucks for you, not really. They're a decent sewing machine. What sucks for you is that you bought into their marketing ploy of heavy duty because it's just not. I mean, that's the long and the short of it. It's a decent standard sewing machine. You pay roughly 150 to 300 dollars depending on like what feet which exact one you get because there's 16. there's 16 heavy duty machines in their lineup which it's really just the same machine with different accessories different feet different coloring and none of them are actually genuinely a heavy duty sewing machine they're like it's got a metal frame 99 percent of sewing machines have a metal frame. That's truth for you. Whether it's aluminum or stainless steel, either of those are going to do the solid job of holding the base of the parts into a stable positioning. Does it mean you should throw it against your wall? Probably not. Will you out of frustration if you're trying to sew something heavy duty? Actually you might because it kind of sucks for heavy duty stuff. So listen, what we're going to talk about is why it's not heavy duty, what heavy duty actually means, and if you need heavy duty, because most people really don't need heavy duty, and then what heavy duty sewing machine you could get, and then just also a good reasonably priced sewing machine. Leave us a comment because it helps us with the YouTube algorithm. Like this video because it helps us with the YouTube al- you Listen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just comment and like because it helps YouTube put us out there more and more people can find us. So for starters, Heavy duty is just branding and marketing. If you fell ploy to it, I am so sorry. You have yourself a basic standard sewing machine that's gonna last you a decent amount of time if you take care of it and try to sew through relatively normal things. You can hem a pair of jeans. You can probably sew a couple layers of leather. You could make a decent amount of cosplay. If you're trying to sew through like warbler or any weird plasticky things and you're using thick threads and you've got sequins and beads and all this other stuff on there, yeah, this is probably going to leave you just as frustrated as your like $75 Walmart sewing machine would. It's just not made to do those things. You actually would need an industrial machine if you're going to try and sew through five layers of actual leather and you'd want a leather foot, and you'd want to actually make sure that you have the right needle size and all of those things. This machine probably isn't gonna actually afford you that much better of a sewing experience than just your basic generic sewing machine if you're trying to sew actual heavy duty things. If you're making purse straps that have millions of layers and thick foam and anything that's rigid with a zipper and stuff like that all in one place, it's gonna struggle. and most sewing machines are going to struggle if you're actually trying to do that. So if you actually use tips and tricks for sewing with multiple layers and sewing with the right size needle, that's going to serve you a lot better than a heavy duty branding sewing machine would. It's gray. I think that's like a mental thing for a lot of people is this machine looks heavier duty because it's gray and it's made to look like metal. And it's not, it's, get the, it's the same plastic case as their Singer Simple lineup. It's just gray as opposed to white. It's got about the same stitches. It's about the same voltage. Both are like 110 volts. Some of them in the lineup do stitch a little bit faster. You're looking at like anywhere between 760 stitches per minute to 1,000 stitches per minute. The reality is most people don't stitch that fast. If you're doing really long straight stitches, then maybe you'll get up that far. If you're doing curves and garment sewing and such like that, you're not going to be stitching at a thousand stitches per minute the majority of the time. And if you are, then it's probably taking you years and years and years to get to that place. And you're not going to be sewing on this machine anymore at that point. You would have upgraded your machine. So let's get into what makes a machine heavy duty versus what's branding for heavy duty. An actual heavy duty machine is going to have metal components. Most sewing machines have metal components. The things that actually make it heavy duty are going to be the amount of power that can actually reach it. And so even like the Janome HD, which stands for heavy duty, 1000 and 3000, they say that you're getting one amp or 0.75 amps of actual power to the machine. 
and that's the branding for it. Sometimes it's only 0.5 amps that are going to the machine and then they have like a lightning cable which actually allows it to use more of that voltage at the same time so it's considered more power. So whether or not your machine actually is getting more power isn't going to be determined solely on volts or amps. It's going to be a combination of those things. This is very much my limited understanding of like how power sources actually power things. I'm not an electrician by any stretch of the imagination. But when it comes to actual industrial machines, the difference there is the amount of time that you can spend sewing on that sewing machine. And so when you're talking like long term, those industrial machines or those heavy duty machines are meant to accept power for a longer amount of time. So even though they may have an equal size power source, they can actually stitch for much longer without overheating or without wearing down any parts. And so they're gonna cost more just by nature because it takes more cost for the parts. But those machines are going to last you so much longer if you're actually using it in that heavy duty type frame. With that, most people, if you're watching this, you're probably not gonna need a heavy duty sewing machine. Fact of the matter is you're not gonna get a heavy duty sewing machine for $150 to $300. Sorry. You can get a decent sewing machine that's gonna sew through what most people would need to sew through for $150 to $300. Listen, I've been in this industry for 10 years and when people would bring in a Singer Heavy Duty and our technician would look at it and then they would bring in a Singer Simple and our technician would look at it, honestly, he'd say both of them were pieces of shit. And it's not because they're bad machines, they're just generic everyday sewing machines with different colored branding on it. And the brand Singer, just isn't what it used to be. And that's, they've cut corners, they've changed hands, and they're just not like America's greatest sewing machine brand anymore. And we kind of have to let that go. The nostalgia is what keeps the name alive and that kind of sucks because people buy into it. And you could get a much, much better quality, decent budget sewing machine that's gonna sew what most people would consider heavy duty better than this heavy duty sewing machine. If you're interested in that, you should check out our link below for the best budget sewing machine, yeah. which for us is the Baby Lock Joy. If you have access to any store that can sell that to you, that's the way I'd go. Because it's gonna have all the same metal components and just a general better build quality than your Singer is gonna have. If you actually need heavy duty, then you're gonna want to save your pennies and invest in either like a Juki, straight stitch one of their actual like semi-professional the tl 2020 series or the tl 2022 or any of their new like tl 18 that lineup is going to serve you so much better but they don't have a zigzag so if you want a zigzag then maybe in that same sort of price range you'd want to look at sale right sale rights are semi-industrial or industrial and they're made to sew sales for boats and so they are gonna be stronger, they're gonna sew for longer, and they're gonna have both a zigzag and a straight stitch, which if you're doing costuming and stuff like that, a zigzag is probably something you would want. If you're just doing like a basic hemming and everyday like craft sewing, you don't need the heavy duty machine. You need a solid machine and somebody to show you how to use it, which is why we recommend Baby Luck because you tend to get the training when you buy from a store. So buy from someone you like so that you can actually take classes with them and learn how to make your sewing machine do what you need it to do. More than anything, that's gonna serve you better than buying into branding like heavy duty. And if you absolutely can't find a local store that's gonna be able to help you and service your needs and service your machine, and you really, really need to buy online, we are gonna be putting out a video pretty soon that is gonna be, this is the best machine that I would recommend that you can buy on Amazon. And you can absolutely check out those videos, but I would absolutely check out your local sewing machine store first, if at all possible. If you think that you need a heavy duty sewing machine, don't buy this machine because it's not gonna be heavy duty. If you are actually sewing something that requires heavy duty, save, wait, 
get the $350 Janome HD 1000 or 3000 for just everyday like costuming and such heavy duty needs. If you're doing a business where you're actually sewing heavy duty things for extended periods of time, you really need like a Juki TL18 or a Sailrite to actually get through that length of time of sewing and actual materials that you're sewing through. Other than that, just go get yourself a basic sewing machine and learn how to use it. And hopefully we can help you with that. Okay, bye.